Welcome back, everybody. I wanted to talk to you guys about a few things. First, we're going to talk about uh, study guides versus the technical manuals from like Sacramento State um, or WEF or whatever your state standard is. Uh, we're going to talk about the fact that the channel's hit a thousand subscribers and thank all of you for that and um, talk to you about what comes next uh, with regards to uh, what, what kind of privileges that's unlocked on the channel. And the third thing I want to talk to you guys about is upcoming videos that I've got in, in store for you. So let's start with study guides versus uh, the technical manual. So in my left hand, I've got my grade four and five study guide. And in my right hand, I've got the volume two Sacramento State Office of Water Programs manual. So, um, you know, I, I, the study guides, a lot of people ask, can I just pass the test using the study guides and things like my channel and things like that? I think you can. Um, I, I do because I've done it but, um, and that was like early on, I, I needed to use these manuals for my later tests because um, even though the study guide points you in the right direction, this is kind of your North Star, you know, it's like, hey, um, I know these books are like, look at the difference in thickness here. <laughs> it's like, it's not even close. They distill them down. Kind of what I'm trying to do on this channel is distill down the information so that you know exactly what to study for exactly which test. There's a caveat to all this though. These books, um, have a bigger, like more um, rounded picture of everything. So they, they have a lot of value in that regard, but there's, I think the biggest difference between these two, a guide and a manual, is that they write the questions based off of what's in this manual, not what's on this guide. And these guides and my YouTube channel talk to you like a normal human being talks to you. These books do not talk to you like a normal human being talks to you. That's why they're so hard to get through. They're very technical, they're very dry. And um, I'm, as most of you know, I'm studying for my grade five right now. I'm not, I'm, I'm probably gonna take it pretty quick. I actually went to apply to take the test and then realized I was three education hours short. I, I didn't, or ed education points short, didn't realize that. So um, I signed up for a Sac State class, knocked it out real quick, um, a class that I hadn't taken yet. And um, while I was taking that class, it, it occurred to me why looking through these books is so important and why taking the practice tests in these books are so important. The way they word the questions are ridiculous. As I was going through the questions, I, a moment, I remember hearing myself say, who talks like this? <laughs> like nobody talks like this. Operators don't talk to each other like they word these questions. This is outrageously convoluted. It's almost as if they get a sensical question and say, hey, how would a normal person ask this question? And then they all agree that this is a good question to test an operator on. And then they say, now let's add seven to 10 irrelevant words. So um, anyway, it's not every single test question, but there's some that, you know, even, you know, I'll be sitting there and taking a certification exam and have to sit back and go, what are they asking me for? I don't know. <laughs> it's not that I don't know the answer if it was asked in a normal way. It's that I don't know what they're actually asking. And so that's a big, um, hump to get over in your test. And that's why these are so important because it's the lexicon that they are talking, the test makers are talking. So this, if you're having trouble understanding these, my channel and things like these study guides are very good at helping you understand. And then you've got to translate it over to the language of the test. Okay. So that's my biggest, um, difference I would say between the two. Now, if you disagree with me on that, please put it in the comments below. Um, if you have a, you know, your opinion, would you do, would you go straight with a study guide or would you also use the manuals? Um, I, I recommend using the manuals. Um, I have done straight with the study guide, but that was like my grade two and it was uh, not dicey, but yeah, I wasn't ready for the way they worded the questions. But anyway, moving on to the next topic is the channel reached a thousand subscribers. Thank you everybody. And it's all because of you. Yes, I'm doing a lot of hard work and I'm making these videos, but I wouldn't have continued making them if people out there didn't want to watch them. Okay. So, um, I honestly thought at this point I'd be somewhere around hundred subscribers and we're at a thousand, actually 12, almost 1200, I hit a thousand last week and it blew right past. And I thank all of you for sharing my videos. That's actually what's doing it. I'm finding that my videos are being shared on social media. Um, I do it on LinkedIn and Reddit, but it appears that a couple of Facebook groups were, were sharing them. And I, if you joined off of that, thank you so much. Um, it really does mean a lot to me. The thing it does, um, there was, you can always, you, you could always live stream, um, but there's like strings attached and it's confusing. And what I didn't want to do is do a live stream that would, um, you know, cut off in the middle or if there's a time limit and, you know, I, I have a tendency to go on and on. So I wanted to wait until I hit a thousand subscribers so that all strings are off. There's no strings attached. All, all live stream functionality is, is 
mine to have. So um, I'm planning a live stream probably mid July ish, um, uh, 30 minutes probably on a lunch break um, or a break of some kind, or I'll just take it unpaid. I'm going to put a poll out on the channel about time frames, like, you know, in the morning, afternoon, evening, Pacific time, and the majority uh, that vote on that um, will do it during that time. And so just look for that poll. I'll put it out maybe in the next couple days or maybe today. I don't know. We'll see. But um, it's super exciting. Now, the other thing a thousand subscribers does is I, you know, I got some accolades from, from some friends. They go, oh, you're monetized now. No, I'm not. Um, the, I still am a long way away from watch hours. And that's okay because if you actually do any research into how much YouTubers make, it's not a lot of money. Um, if, if I were to hit a thousand, or I've got the thousand subscribers. If I were to hit 4,000 watch hours and I get, I, you know, start making money off videos, we're talking at my level, like two bucks a video. So let's not get too excited about that. I, it's great. I, I won't give them the money back, but it's not life changing money. You have to have a really big channel for stuff like that. What I'm really excited about is actually targeting the 10,000 subscriber threshold because, um, you know, I was talking with some friends um, that aren't in the industry the other day about the channel and they were really happy for how much it's grown and my success and the channel success and your success. And I said, you know, you know, they asked me what my end game was and I said, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just a guy out there making videos. I have no end game. I have no agenda. I'm just doing it to help people. And I said, but you know what, the more I've been thinking about it, I'm really excited about disrupting the training industry. That that's actually sounds like a lot of fun to me. <laughs> um, so I, now I've got my site set on 10,000 subscribers. It's a nice mile marker um, for just um, kind of influencing the industry a little bit and saying, Hey guys, like, look at the look at the need there is there's a need here, obviously, or else this channel wouldn't be succeeding. So um, let's make training more accessible. Let's tra make training more affordable. Let's get it to the people who need it. Okay. Um, and uh, let's worry less about how much money we're making off of people trying to break into this career and let's just help people. So um, obviously we all need to make money and eat and pay our bills and, and live somewhere, but, uh, but like maybe let's not bleed people dry. So um, anyway, I'm super excited about that. And uh, that's, that's kind of the thousand subscriber thing. Again, thank you everybody for your support and um, let's march on to 10,000 subscribers. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about is upcoming content. I've already talked about the live stream, so look for that poll. Uh, the other cool videos that are coming your way are um, right now the clarifier at the plant is getting lined. Um, actually, they are wrapping up sandblasting today and then they're lining it. I got, I've already built half of that video. I'm, I'm super excited to get it out for you. Look for that last week of June, first week of July. Um, I'm also going to be doing an industrial treatment tour uh, with a colleague down the road and we're going to go to his plants and check out um, some of his um, his side of the fence. So I'm municipal, he's industrial. And um, he actually, it's really cool. He's got a manufacturing floor where they're actually building package treatment plants. We're not looking at that um, yet. We're gonna talk, we've talked about doing a tour of his uh, facility, but we're not doing it quite quite yet. But um, the other thing we're, we will be doing very soon is going to his plants in the field. And he's gonna give us an explanation about what we're looking at and how industrial and municipal wastewater treatment uh, differ, as well as the value of package treatment plants, pros and cons, um, and, uh, you know, where the future of all that's going. I think that's going to be really good content. And then, um, of course, more math, more uh, whiteboard lessons. Um, we're going to be getting into activated sledge in the second half of the year. Um, and I'm, I'm super excited about that. I'm trying to find somebody with a pond that I have access to. Um, there's a few pond systems around. I'm just trying to decide what um, I want to do, like which one I want to do, and if they're willing to do a YouTube video about it. And then the other thing I'm going to try to do is reach out to a county contact locally. Um, I toured their plant as part of a meeting for my job. Um, we had a meeting at the um, drinking water treatment plant down the road, um, and they had a DAF unit. I didn't realize they had a DAF unit, and I, you know, I'm, I'm kicking myself for not taking video of it while I was there, but I didn't have permission and. I wasn't going to take a video of somebody else's gear and then put it on YouTube. I don't think that's in good taste, but I want to reach out to him, the chief operator over there, um, when the dust kind of settles at my plant and see if we can do a tour of his uh, drinking water treatment plant and maybe um, focus on that DAF unit because they're really, really um, heavily used in wastewater treatment. Um, so I think that's, or they have been in the past, you're definitely going to be tested on them. So um, anyway, that's my update. Um, I think use both the study guide and the study manuals. Thank you again for um, the thousand subscribers, everybody. Let's get to 10,000. Let's disrupt this training industry. I think I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with this. And then uh, lastly, look forward to those videos and vote in that poll. Let me know when you guys want to live stream. Until next time, have a great day.